Orbiter X. Episode 6, Breakaway. At the headquarters of the Commonwealth Space Project in Woomera, Colonel Kent suspects that the plan to assemble the space station, known as Orbiter X, is being deliberately sabotaged. The hostile force is, in fact, the unity organization led by Dr. Max Kramer. Ahead of the world in space travel, unity has already established an underground base on the moon. Captain Bob Britton, Matt McClelland and Hickey, who are prisoners inside the base, discover that a large unmanned rocket from Woomera is soon to land only a few miles away from them. They believe that if they can reach it aboard a Unity hover car, it can take them back to the Earth. Working in a subterranean tunnel, they open a gap leading to the surface of the moon. Breaking through in their spacesuits, they run towards the hover car, which is the first vital link in their escape line. Hold it! Oh, no! What is it? A hover car. It's taking off. We're too late. Kram has beaten us to it. Well, uh, there must be something we can do. Yes, I think there is. But I shall have to move fast. What do you mean, Bob? I'm going back through the tunnel, through the airlock, and up to the control room. We've got to get that hover car back here. And the only way to do it is to send Kram an emergency message on the radio. Oh, what will you say? I don't know yet, Mac. But I'll, I'll think of something. Maybe I'll make the radio operator do the talking. I well, suppose he refuses. Yeah. Remember I picked up a knife in the tunnel? I don't think he'll argue when he sees that. Uh, it's worth having a go. Let's get cracking. No, Hickey. You and Mac will stay in the tunnel entrance. If the plan works, you'll see the hover car come back pretty soon. Wait until Kramer gets out and goes back through the main airlock into the base. Then run like blazes. Get aboard the car, deal with the crew, and set off straight for the rocket. You know how to find it by steering on his radio bleeps. Wait a minute. What about you, Bob? I'll join you if I can. But if I don't show up by the time you're ready to start, don't wait. We're not leaving without you. No, uh, not likely. You will if I'm not there. Now, listen, Bob. And that's an order. We've got to tell CSP about unity and nothing else matters. But, Bob... Don't argue. There's no time to lose. I've got to get through the tunnel and into the control room quickly. Hope to see you later. Okay. Good luck. Good luck to you, chaps. Thanks, Bob. We'll be watching for you. Hello, this is Moon Control calling. MHQ to hover car. Are you receiving me? Hello, MHQ. Yes, we are receiving. Dr. Kramer, this is radio operator Letman. I have just received a signal from Unity Earth headquarters. Commander Gelbin has taken off aboard relief ship Unity 4 and will be landing here as arranged. Message understood. Thank you. That is all. No, not quite all, Edmund. Well, Britain, what are you doing here? Don't move. Keep your hand away from that transmission key. What do you want? I want Kramer brought back. Right away. But that's impossible. He's going to recover the woman of projectile as soon as it lands. Exactly. That's why I'm here. I don't understand. Now listen. You're going to call him up again. You're going to tell him that you've just had another signal from your Earth headquarters. I can't do that. Tell him that you have an intelligence report saying that the Woomera moon probe is a trap. It's believed to be fitted with an atomic charge which is likely to explode as soon as he starts the recovery but work. He would Say never that been... Captain Britain should know about this and could probably make the charge harmless. You will also tell him to return here at once for more information. Have you got that? You'd better talk to Dr. Kramer yourself. I shall have nothing to do with it. I think you will. Oh, take that knife away from my throat. Are you going to talk or not? No. Well, in that case, I... Oh, all right, I'll do it. Good. But be very careful what you say. Have you got the message straight? Yes, but I don't understand what you hope to achieve. Uh, never mind. Press that transmission key and start talking. Hello? Moon Control calling. MHQ to hover car. Come in, please. Urgent. Hello, MHQ. 
Other car answering you. Dr. Kramer, I've just received an intelligence report about the woman a projectile. It is believed to be a trap. It has an atomic charge which may explode if you approach it. EHQ say that Captain Britain knows this and knows how the mechanism works. Yes, this is interesting. Earth headquarters ask if you will return to base as soon as possible for more information. Very well. I shall go into this most carefully. It confirms my suspicions. Your, your suspicions? Yes. It seemed a strange coincidence that the probe should be landing so close to base. I shall be with you shortly, Letman. Very good, sir. Well done, Letman. Now perhaps you will tell me what you hope to get out of this. You shall see, all in good time. And while we're waiting, you will cut the interference transmitter so that my friends in Woomera will be able to pick up the rocket on their monitors before it lands. You heard me, Letman. Ah, oh, very well. That's better. Uh, you are free to speak to them on the radio, if you wish. <laughs> Thanks for the suggestion, Ledman, but I know what you're thinking. Kramer might intercept the transmission. No, I shall wait until he's safely back and halfway through the airlock. That, my friend, is when I shall call Woomera. Icky, listen. We're picking up the sound of engines on our helmet receivers. It must be the hover car coming back. Yes, you're right, Mac. Yes, look. There it is. So Bob's plan has worked. Yes, but where is he? He should be back with us now. What should we do if he doesn't show up? He's given us our orders. We carry them out. Yes, I suppose we must. Uh, the hover car stopping outside the entrance to Moon HQ. Yes, so I see. Keep down, Matt. Kramer's getting out. Uh, so is his station commander. What's his name? Uh, Neeson. That's right. And the rest of the crew's falling. Yes. We're in luck. Uh, all going into the airlock. Do you think we can get the hover car moving as soon as we get aboard? Yes, sir. I watched exactly what Neeson did with the controls when he brought us here. I think I've got them taped all right. Good. I think I have to. Now, you all set? Yes. I hate going ahead without Bob, but there's no alternative. Come on. Run for it, right? Hello, hello. This is Captain Britain calling CSP Woomera. Captain Britain calling CSP Woomera. I'm speaking from a base 40 miles south of Wagentin in the third quadrant of the moon. Kramer's arrived back. You are too late. Go away, Ledman. This is urgent. There is nothing wrong with the CSP ships. We were attacked by a hostile force called Unity, which is planning to take over Orbiter X as a preliminary to world conquest. You must take action right away. All right, leave him to me. I can't say any more. That stopped him. Letman, did you cut the transmitter? No, but it's all right. The power was turned down. Huh. Trying to talk to CSP, was he? He was, but he will not have been heard, Dr. Neeson. Where are McClellan and Hicks? I haven't seen them. But what has been happening? Britain came in just after I sent you the signal about Commander Gelbin. He had a knife and... So he was here when you sent the second signal, the warning about the projectile? Yes. Why did he let you send it? Answer me. He, he made me. What do you mean he made you? Speak up. He forced me to send it. I, I thought it might be genuine. Had you any reason to doubt it? You got the warning from EHQ Intelligence? Oh, did you, Letman? No, I did not. What? Britain gave it to me. So, it was a trick? Yes, a trick. And you knew it, Letman. He had a knife at my throat. You're under arrest. Take him away. No, let me explain. I believed you were engaged. Get him out of my sight. I shall deal with him later. Kramer? The interference transmitter has been turned off. Turn it on quickly. And turn up the monitors. Right. What's that on the screen? Hmm. Why, it's... It's the hover car. It's moving away. I don't understand. I think I do. Hello, hello. This is MHQ calling hover car. Answer me immediately. They're not speaking. Who? Who is aboard? 
Britain can answer that. Give him a shot of restorative. My jest pistol has only knocked him out. He is not seriously hurt. Right. He has succeeded in making idiots of us all. I still don't follow. It is obvious that he and his friends found a way out of the tunnel. They hope to reach the hover car and meet the warmer projectile when it lands. We left before they could reach it, so Britain used Littman to call us back. So McClelland and Hicks are aboard. Exactly. And look at the screen. They are steering straight for the Wargenton landing area. The restorative is beginning to work. Good. Uh, Britain. Uh, Britain. Uh, Rouse yourself. Uh, Kramer. Open your eyes. Now listen to me. You are going to the radio, and you are going to speak to McLaren and Hicks. What? Now I'm going to do the dictating. I have a message for you to broadcast to the friends who are trying to leave you behind. You mean they've got away? Oh, it's wonderful. Don't be too sure. I congratulate you on your enterprise, but you cannot match yourself against me, not even when you have the assistance of one of my own staff. But you have overlooked two points. Oh, what are they? First, I can stop your friends at any moment I choose. Huh? How? I will explain in a moment. The second point is that Lettman did have the wit to turn down the power of the main transmitter, so you will not have been heard at CSP headquarters. It was a good effort, Captain Britton, but not quite good enough. Monitoring station at Alice Springs should be coming through to us any moment now, Colonel. Oh, good. What exactly was it they said to you? Well, it was a junior engineer who came on the phone. All he said was he'd been playing around with a radio lash-up he'd built himself, and suddenly he picked up some RT. The signal was very weak, but when he heard CSP mentioned, he straightway flicked on the switch of his tape recorder. That was at uh, 1705. Smart boy. And you've arranged to have the tape played down to us over the radio telephone link. That's right. Uh, it only runs for a few seconds. There's probably nothing in it, but I thought we'd play safe. Of course. It's a tragedy that we should have lost touch with the moon probe just when it seemed to be more or less in the clear. Yes. Uh, I've checked up on the atmospheric conditions, sir, and the funny thing is that there's no evidence of any unusual sunspot activity and nothing really to account for the loss of reception. So my theory becomes more and more logical. I think it does. Yes. And if there is an intelligent agent working against us, Seems reasonable that he should screen his activities behind this interference. Hello, CSP control here. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, I'll switch it on. Alice Springs, sir. They're playing the tape over to us on Channel 7. Oh, good. Hello, Monica. Yeah, we're getting you okay. You can start the tape whenever you like. Okay, so long. Turn on the recorder and we'll take it down ourselves. You never know, it might be interesting. Right, sir. Here we go. Wrong with the CSP ships. A hostile unity. Take over Orbiter X as a preliminary. Do you recognize the voice, Brown? I wouldn't like to say, but it could have been Captain Britton. That's exactly what I thought. Ah, it looks as if that's all we're going to get, sir. Ask if they got any direction on the signal. Right. Hello, Alice Springs. Is that the lot? I see. Tell me, did your bloke get any DF on that? No? Well, did he hear anything else before he started recording? Just the words calling CSP. I see. OK, then. Thank you. It couldn't have been Bob. Must have been some radio ham talking about the project. I wonder. What was the position of Bob's derelict ship when that signal was picked up? Oh, I can soon tell you that, sir. Here's the orbit chart here and the timings. Well, look here. This is Orbiter 2's course. Yes, and at 1705, it would have been passing over us. That's right. It was more or less between us and the moon. But you don't think the signal came from Orbiter 2, do you? No, there can't be anybody left alive in the ship. 
Strange things do happen. Listen, I want to speak to the engineer who monitored that signal. I want to know everything about it, but everything. Right, sir. And I shall play the tape over to the minister. If Bob is still alive, I shall do everything in my power to help him, even if I have to take off a ship myself, with or without permission. <laughs> How are we doing, Mac? All right, Hickey. You seem to have got the hang of the controls okay. Yes, they're dead simple. The main thing is to keep the hover car just the right distance above the ground. Four or five feet seems to be about the best. Oh, I wish I knew just how the lifting jets work. Well, they work on ionic drive. That's all we need to know, I suppose. Yeah. Turn to your left a bit. Keep on the signals. What's the probe doing now? Uh, retro jets are firing. Yeah. There's no reason why it shouldn't make a safe landing. Do you think we were right to leave Bob behind? Yes, laddie. We were quite right. You know, when he left us, I think he knew he wouldn't be able to join us again. I uh, don't be too depressed. And Bob's a tough customer. He knows how to look after himself. Yes, but now it's him against the rest. I wonder what's happening back there in MHQ. Uh, it's certainly strange we haven't heard from any of them. I'll turn up the radio again. MHQ. What's that? I've got it. Listen. Yes. What do we do about it, Mick? I'm going to answer them. We must know what's happened. They should hear me now if I press the transmission key. Hello, MHQ. We are now receiving you. Captain McClelland, you will return to base immediately. You do nothing of the sort, Mick. Bob. Hello, Bob. Are you all right? I'm fine. I want to tell you. H hello. Hello. We shall carry on. Do you agree, Hickey? Yes, we'll take our chance. All right. You can ease up a bit. Right. Look, there's the projector. It's coming down straight ahead of us. <sighs> Look, you can see it through the windows. Yeah, just like a falling star. Oh, it's making a perfect landing. It's touching down on hard ground. You can tell that because there isn't much dust being stirred up. How far away would you say it is? Mm, two or three miles. All right, then I'd better slow down a bit more. Oh, you're, you're still clocking around the 60 miles. Yeah, it's okay. I know how to brake with the jets. Oh, I hope you do. Hickey. Is that the hatch beginning to move? Yes, it's opening out like a miniature drawbridge. All ready for the tractor yes. to run down. Everything working beautifully, eh? Yeah. The tractor's coming out now. There it is. <laughs> it's difficult to believe it's all automatic, oh, isn't it? It's a wonderful piece of machinery. You can actually see the cameras panning around on top of the tractor. Yes. You know, and the one in the middle uses microfilm. Uh -huh. It's supposed to go on working for 12 hours until the tractor goes back into the ship and the whole bag of tricks takes off and returns to the air. Yeah, but we'll be going instead of the tractor. And we hope. Well, I'm going to start breaking, Mac. Okay. Draw up as close to the projectile as you can, but for heaven's sake, don't ram it. After we've stopped, I'll turn on the intercom again. And we'll try and have a quick word with Bob. Well, Captain Britton, I'm giving you your last chance to order your men back. Their lives are in your hands. The decision is yours. I'll let you have it in due course. If you wait too long, we shall launch the first missile. Neeson, is the interference transmitter working correctly? Yes, all is well. Good. It'll be safe, then, to call up McClellan and Hicks. I wish to speak to them. Right. Hello? This is MHQ calling Hovercar. MHQ calling. Are you receiving? Yes, we are receiving you. I'll take over. Captain McClellan, you've been warned that you are in serious danger. I'm holding my fire... Only because I wish to avoid unnecessary waste of life and valuable materials. Nevertheless, if you continue to ignore my warning, I shall be compelled to take action. Do you understand? 
Yes, we understand. I have told Captain Britton that the final decision rests with him. He seems reluctant to talk, but I shall now tell him to give you your official instructions. Pass to you, Britton. All right. Hello, Mac. Hello, Hickey. Hello, Bob. Bob, what's been going on? I'm afraid I haven't made much success of things at this end, but you've done your job wonderfully well. Congratulations. I see on the scanner here that you've stopped the hover car alongside the projectile, and it only remains for you to put oxygen aboard and take off. That's the idea. But I know these people mean business. They'll certainly launch missiles against you. Yes, we would take that risk, Bob. They will probably fire just after you take off. You'll be a difficult target, and if the first missile doesn't stop you, you may get away. Now, it's up to me to tell you whether or not to go ahead. You don't have to say any more, Bob. Leave it to that. Okay, Mac. Good luck to you both. This unity organization has got to be broken. That's you know what to do? Right enough! Go on! Keep Captain Britton well away from the instrument panels. Watch that he doesn't try any tricks. And Neeson, you will line up the first missile. Very good. But do not fire until I give you the word. Two full oxygen cylinders in the back of the hover car, Mac. I reckon we'd better take both of them. Yes, we should be able to lift them all right. Yes, they don't weigh much in moon gravity. Oh, you're right. right. Well, we'll take one each and get straight aboard the probe. Up the ramp, laddie. That's your stuff. In you go. We shall have to use our torches inside because there are no luxuries like lighting. Dump the cylinders down in the clamps that hold the tractor. Okay. Well, what do you think of your new home? It reminds me of the engine room in my last ship. Except this is vertical, that was usually horizontal. Ah, you'll find this is safer than those atomic subs of yours, Chief. Safer, eh? I suppose it might be all right if Kramer wasn't lining up his missiles for the Big Bang. Uh, better not think about that. Oh, well, I'm not worried. Not much, anyway. I bet he misses. Sure he will. Now, look, there aren't any seats in this machine, but I've got a couple of rubber mattresses here from the hover car. They'll help us on takeoff. All right, fine. And we can strap ourselves down to those rings in the deck. Sure. There's no way we could control the jets at the moment, I suppose. No, I'm afraid not. After takeoff, the automatic pilot will lock onto woman. And 300 miles above the earth, it should turn the ship into orbit. We shall start losing altitude until we reach about 200 miles. Uh, that's when a tender will come out to collect the films and instruments. Whoever comes aboard is going to have a terrible shock and he finds he's got us instead of the tractors and its <laughs> instruments. <laughs> I'll bet. And now, uh, shall we get ready for the big moment? Yes, OK. And uh, to close the hatch, I have to do is to trigger off the compressors and move this lever. Here. Which I suppose is normally operated by the tractor as it comes back. Uh, here it goes. Uh, yes, the hatch is closing. And better strap ourselves down. All right. Ah, compressors are working. So it won't be long now. Are you all right? Yes. What do you say the thrust would be for the takeoff? Uh, about five or six G, I think. Not too bad. No, uh, we can take that all right. Get started. That's up to the CSP designers now. If they've done their job, we should start lifting. Uh, yes, here we go. Get away! Yeah, all right by the feel of it. Yes, sir. It's a perfect takeoff. This is where we start counting the seconds. Yes, I expect the units are watching us on their screens. If we can survive the next minute or so, uh, we might be all set for home. Yes, home. And just a few seconds can make all the difference. I feel I want to start counting. Uh, uh, well, we didn't have to wait long for missile number one. No, it was oh, nearly on target. Jets sound OK still, don't they, Mac? Yes, they do. Uh, Mac, what's the matter? I've just suddenly had a nasty thought. 
If I'm right, we're in real trouble. What is it, Mac? That explosion may have shifted us off course. Yes, you're right. But we can't check the course anyway, not without instruments. No. But if there's been any terrific change, we might see it if we look down at the surface of the yes. moon. Uh, that means opening the hatch. OK, open it up. Here we go. Just unfasting my straps. What can you see? I don't, don't tell me if we've turned into orbit. Mac, what's happening? Oh, I'm afraid you're in for a shock, Hickey, old son. We haven't turned into orbit. It's worse than that. You mean we're not heading for the Earth? No. Well, where are we heading for? As far as I can judge. Straight out towards infinity. That was the sixth episode of Orbiter X, an adventure in the conquest of space by B.D. Chapman. It was produced for the BBC by Charles Maxwell.